Hello and welcome to Snapshot. I'm your host, Alan Wolf. And on this edition of Snapshot, we're going to take you to one of the most beautiful hotels in the world, the beautiful Biltmore in Carl Gables, Florida. And joining us this morning is a gentleman who is going to give us some more information about our upcoming tour, Mr. Michael Duffel, who is the general manager of the Biltmore. Good morning, Mr. Duffel. Good morning, Alan. Nice to see you. Nice to see you. Tell us a little bit about our tour this morning and what we can expect to show our audience. Well, I thought I'd like to show you one or two places, perhaps, that the general public don't see. As you know, this has had a fascinating history. And perhaps we can delve a little bit into that history. Uh, perhaps your viewers might be interested in the odd ghost story or two, since the building is supposed to be one of the most haunted houses in the country. And we'll discuss the, the general history of the hotel. We'll have a look at the ballrooms. We'll have a look at the wonderful view there is of the golf course at the back of the hotel. And perhaps we can have a look at the largest swimming pool, the largest hotel swimming pool on the mainland of America. Getting back to the ghost stories for just a moment, how many supposedly reside here? Well, there could be thousands. You will recall that this was a hospital. It was a veterans hospital between 1942 and 45 and then became a general hospital after that, but connected with the government and the army until about 19, 1968. Uh, there was obviously a morgue here. Um, sadly, quite a number, I suppose, patients died here. Yeah, that's real fertile ground for ghosts, folks. <laughs> well, are I, we I, gonna visit I, the I morgue area? So. I can take you date. Doesn't, of course, look like a morgue at all. Uh, at the moment, it is, a, it is part of uh, what we now use as the hotel laundry. But certainly, I'll take you down there. Whether we'll actually see a ghost today or not, I'm not sure. Well, we had an interesting experience when we got here today. We loaded some of our gear with our crew into the elevator, and it went to the seventh floor. And we still haven't figured that one out yet. We pushed no buttons, folks. Well, what's the first order of business on the tour today? Well, why don't we go and have a look at one of our ballrooms? Let's do it. while en route to the ballroom, I could not help noticing the magnificent architecture here, the, the woodwork and the registration desk. This must have some history. The, the mahogany of it all and the marble and so on, yes. Well, everybody who has stayed in this hotel has, of course, signed the, the register here. And the likes of Al Capone is supposed to have stayed Right here. in this hotel? Well, there seems to be some uh, mystery as to whether he did or not. Certainly, he had many... Um, uh, contacts that may have stayed here. Uh, but uh, there is a nickname for one of our suites upstairs, which is the Al Capone Suite. It is, in fact, the Everglades Suite, but... Um, Matter of fact, I understand something happened The staff there. enjoy calling it the Al Capone Suite. Uh, and it has certainly a, an interesting history in itself. And we will be going up there. We'll keep you in suspense momentarily. This is all mahogany, you, you had indicated. Yes. Looks like this, it might be handmade. And this is original. Is this a product of the 1920s here in the Gables? That's right. The hotel was opened in 1926. I understand there were some famous names as well here that had oh, come through the Biltmore. And it had been constructed in the space of 10 months. Quite an engineering feat. How about the uh, ceiling? The magnificent colors. That was restored in 1986. And... Uh, research, an enormous amount of research went into deciding exactly how it was painted. Various pictures of the time were uh, looked at. Very so authenticity was really a prime concern in, in reconstructing the ceiling Absolutely. area. Absolutely. And these beautiful vaulted ceilings here, uh, the, the blue and the stars is also authentic. Restored, of course, again in 19... Uh, 86. Were artists brought in to determine exactly what needed to be done in terms of restoration, colors, style, and so on, and then they had the, the actual artists come in and, and do that work? That's exactly the way it was done, yes. That's beautiful. Let's move on and continue our tour of the Biltmore. Well, 
Well, as we descend the staircase, we are headed into what looks like an inner sanctum. Where are we going? We're going downstairs here to the ground floor of the hotel. And this is where all our um, administrative areas are. And it was down here, when the place was a hospital, that um, the morgue was located. We're now going past our end security office. And this our... entire area was the morgue? Well, I don't think they needed a, a morgue quite as big as that, but I, I, I'll not. show you where it was. Not uh, being an expert on <laughs> death and hoping that the show is not dying. <laughs> this is our uh, uniform uh, issue department, and we are now entering into the... This is the laundry of the hotel. Now, this is certainly a place that nobody would ever get to see who is a, a guest here. Immediately it's not the location uh, that the original laundry was in. The original laundry is where one of our restaurants is at the moment. But generally, this was the morgue area. Well, over here is said to have been where the morgue was. You seem to have a very morbid interest, sir, in the morgue. And it said that this was the area. Very low ceiling, as you can see in here. Yes. And we use it at the moment for uh, the storage of some of our uh, older linen. Very interesting. Hi, I'm Alan Wolf, host of the TV show Snapshot. Hurricane Andrew has certainly devastated our community. The marching band students of South Dade, Homestead, and Southridge Senior High Schools need your financial support for their devastated band program. Please send your donation to the Band Parents Association at one of these three high schools. The students will appreciate it, and you'll feel good about it. And I thank you. You know, as we move further into the, the inner bowels of the hotel, we find ourselves in a very long corridor here. Where are we heading? We're heading now towards the main kitchen of the hotel. When the hotel was reconstructed in 1986, the opportunity was taken to put the two restaurants for the hotel down on this ground floor level. They had, when the hotel was in operation before, been what we now use as the two ballrooms, the Alhambra and the Granada room. Well, the opportunity was taken to move them down here and to place the kitchen, which we will now see down here, in the middle between the two restaurants for ease of service. And as we walk here, we see that this is the, uh, the room service department with the trolleys laid up for service upstairs. And this is the main area of the kitchen here. It's a very busy kitchen this morning because uh, we are preparing for our Sunday brunch. What's really impressive to me walking into this area is how spotlessly clean it is. I imagine that takes a tremendous amount of work to well, keep it like this. Well, we've got good teams here, I must say. And uh, the chef, uh, our chef is a man called Per Jakobsen. He's uh, a Dane. And uh, he's uh, very particular about his kitchen, and quite rightly so. Well, as we walk through here, of course, as we do on all of our snapshot shows, Alan Wolf is always looking for something to sample to make sure everything is just as good uh, as it seems to be. I'll find something for you. Example: This is where all our, our room service orders come in, and these girls take the orders and hand them to the waiters, and they are dealt with with promptitude and exactitude. I knew that. We'll, I hope, meet the chef in a minute. This is the stewarding area, the washing up department. And this is the chef's office. Now, is there one head chef? Yes, the executive then, chef. And then what is, what is that person's job specifically? He's in charge of the overall food production and the administration of the kitchen. Then we have a, uh, a chef that's in charge of the, uh, the pantry section of the kitchen, the cold larder. We have a chef who is in charge of all the banquets. We have a chef that's in charge of our restaurant. Sort of like specialists. That's right. Because I guess that's... we have such an enormous empire here to look after. And we also have our own pastry chef. Here, for example, is Tina, <laughs> who is our pastry chef, who's been making oh, these wow. wonderful delights oh. for our um, buffet today. I can smell them all the way over here. I smell Well, what are you going to sample, then? Uh, well, I say I'll sample anything. Uh, I'm not particular. What about this wonderful tray we have here? Oh, look at this, folks. 
What do you think? Wouldn't you like to be here at the Biltmore to uh, the key sample line. one of these? Yes, what would you suggest to start with here? <laughs> well, it depends if you want something with fruit, key lime pie, or orange soft, uh, cheesecake. Orange cheesecake. Well, I think we'll just try that. Gee, it, it, it's really, um, it's kind of uncouth of me to be picking these up with my hands, but I do this oh, all the time. <laughs> well, thank you very Enjoy. much. Mm. How's that? Oh, this is wonderful. Did you prepare these? I prepared everything. You did all of these. May I just take this for a moment and ask you a, a question about how long does it take you to do this kind of work in an average morning? Well, it takes me several days of preparation, you know. Uh, some things are made ahead of time. Some things are, have to be made on the spot, like things with fruit. But some things can be prepared, the dose, and then finish the day before, the night before, or the just before we, we start the events. Thank you very much, Beatrice Oliveira. <laughs> well, as promised, we are now going to one of the ballrooms. So many neat things to see on the way, we just couldn't resist. Which ballroom is this? This is the Alhambra ballroom. We have two this size uh, with different decor, both with magnificent ceilings, lovely chandeliers. Was this ceiling restored as well? Yes, as it was. We saw. Yes, it was. Yes. And here you see the staff getting ready for a lunchtime function here on the Sunday, putting the finishing touches to the tables. This, at one time, was the lounge of the hotel, with the other ballroom being the restaurant. Is this a fireplace we see here? That's a fireplace. Is it yes. operational? It is indeed, yes. Well, you can Seems sure. It's a bit in Congress, doesn't it, to have a fireplace in Miami? Well, you know, I think it fits in with the elegance of this place. Uh, I agree. I feel uh, as, as one might have felt being back in the 1920s here in, in the golden age, the Merrick age of, of Coral Gables. Uh, you can feel the magnificence in here. I imagine it never wears off working here on a daily basis. It's a very gracious room, isn't it? And we've done quite a bit to um, increase the beauty of the ceiling by installing these uh, lights, these sconces around the room, to highlight the wonderful paintwork of the ceiling. And you've done it all without losing any of the authenticity of the period. Well, I can't wait to move on to some other areas. <laughs> Well, we are here on the 13th floor, which does not thrill me a great deal. And I must, uh, I must tell our, our audience that when we first came up here today, the door shut on you. We haven't had that happen yet. <laughs> this is uh, interesting. Well, That's, this is what we call the Everglades Suite, but many of the staff like to call it the Al Capone, and indeed it, it, it has um, the reputation of being somewhat notorious. In what respect? Well, there was a murder up here, and Fatty Walsh's ghost is said still to haunt this, this floor. Fatty Walsh is a guy who ate some of that cheesecake, right? <laughs> no, not really. <laughs> the entire suite here takes up the floor, and as you can see through the windows, magnificent views of the golf course to the south of us. And then if we look around the corner to the right, we see our swimming pool, the tennis courts over there on the left. It it's is. a magnificent suite. At the moment, it's, um, I'm afraid, uh, being renovated in that we are upgrading the bedrooms here. I see that magnificent view you made reference to. This is just beautiful. Isn't that wonderful? And it seems to be empty. I wonder if it really is empty. <laughs> I wonder if really we are here with, uh, with some, some other force. Uh, I don't know if it's, if it's state of mind, but it's an well, interesting feeling here. And Fatty this is the Walsh place where the was supposed took place. to have been gunned down here on the floor. Right in this area. A man called Wilson that he was in partnership with in a gambling enterprise here. Shot him. Shot him in the back first. Fatty turned and he was shot again. And his friend Clark went to his aid. And Clark himself was shot as well, although he didn't die. But Fatty was dead almost the moment he hit the floor. 
on going on in here were, was illicit gambling. An enormous commotion broke out, of course, as soon as um, the shots were heard. It said that Fatty ran through here, probably escaped through this door here, which at that time would have led to the back staircase. Ran all the way down the staircase to the lobby, across the lobby, and out through the hotel. Apparently, he was never seen again. But there were witnesses to it, particularly a young showgirl who disappeared through the door there, ran up the little winding staircase to the mezzanine floor up above there. And there was a bedroom up there at the time. And she had witnessed this. And although later she was questioned by the police, uh, that did not help the investigation at all. It took the police a little while to get up here because although they arrived fairly soon at the hotel, the elevators wouldn't go down to the lobby. Whether that was by design or, or not, I don't know. But eventually, under threat of closing down the elevators, if they didn't come down, they were able to get up here. But by the time they got here, there was not a trace to be seen of the gambling operation that had taken place before. And there had been perhaps something like 100 people here in this room. The tables had disappeared, all the glasses and the drink, the waiters, the valet, even the band that was said to have been playing Alexander's ragtime band as hit as fatty hit the floor. And, and this happened within a period of how much time? This disappearance of everything? Within the space, I suppose, of about half an hour. Incredible. And fatty is still said to haunt this floor. How many prominent apparitions, spirits, ghosts are said to inhabit this place, ones that are perhaps well known? There is, there is a ghost said to haunt the, the golf course. In 1924, a woman w walking on the golf course was attacked. She was walking with her, her baby boy. The woman was attacked, her, her throat was cut. The boy was found later wandering the golf course and was looked after. And it's said that she wanders the golf course looking for her lost baby. Even to this day. Even to this day. Very interesting. I'm sure this is a place that our audience has never had the opportunity to go. And we move on. Ghost. <laughs> I have ever seen. And of course, the surrounding building adds to the magnificence of this area. Tell us a little bit about the history of it. When it was first built, this pool was 26 feet deep. You see we have a, a diving tower over here, and the likes of um, Johnny Weissmuller, he was a, an Olympic swimmer and the first Tarzan, used to perform here. I think Esther Williams was here as well, and there used to be amazing aquatic shows. There used to be a bridge between this side and that side. The whole of the area at the back there, which is now this uh, loggia area, used to have stands there for spectators to watch the fabulous aquatic shows that were held here. The fine dining restaurant, which is over there underneath the, the terrace, looks out over the pool with these statues being silhouetted against the pool at night. It really is a dramatic area. Those statues look like they have been here for quite some time as well. Yes, how original they are, I'm afraid I can't comment, but uh, they do look nice, don't they? And do you have a crew that just maintains your pool area? It is we do, we do. We have, um, we have a man who, throughout the day, really is almost constantly in the pool, making sure that it's perfectly clean. Well, we're going to move on to the next area. There are so many beautiful things to see here at the Biltmore. It's, it's really hard to decide what to do next. This is just one of the many parts you can play as a young Red Cross volunteer. Volunteer and play your part. Fitness is certainly a part of everybody's life that is uh, of utmost importance, and you have such an area here. Well, it's a very small area at the moment, but we're in the process of uh, 
expanding this into five times the size of the room that we can see here to have uh, weight machines and free weights as well as the uh, machines that you see here. It's also connected to our uh, spa which will be opening very shortly. Nice area, lots of uh, professional trainers down here in order to look after our guests. I noticed that this is very high-tech looking equipment. It looks like uh, very new equipment here. Well, this piece is new and this is, uh, this hammer strength machine is new and this is going to be the pattern of all the machines that we have. And this is the, the Stairmaster. We've heard that'll get you fit. Uh, that'll get you word. fit real quickly, won't it? Yeah. in another restaurant. I notice immediately the, the ceilings are so low and, and well, cordial. It's interesting because I was telling you uh, that the ballrooms upstairs used to be the restaurant, the lounge of the hotel, and this uh, restaurant was, in fact, the old laundry of the hotel. We started off by seeing the, the, the present laundry. This is where the old laundry used to be, but it's been converted, I think, in a very clever way to become our intimate fine dining restaurant. As you can see, overlooking the pool, uh, which is lit at night, and it, the, the water glimmers, shimmers. Particularly impressive to me is the way that they have made this assume the period of the rest of the hotel, even though it was a different area previously. Right. Let's walk through here and uh, take a look at some of the beautiful furniture. And here you can see, remember we met Bettina in the kitchen? Yes. Here you can see the result of uh, oh, Bettina's oh. work. Oh, yes. Uh, this is her, her dessert buffet for the Sunday brunch. Mm. This is a regular feature. <laughs> you gotta say, I'm gonna stay away. I know what you're thinking. What about an eclair this time, Alan? When the general manager says, what about an eclair, it would be impolite to refuse. Right? Absolutely, right? sir. Okay. Absolutely. I will, uh, I will do that right now. Okay, we're about to test to determine just how wonderful these are. <laughs> Need I say more? <laughs> No, they have lovely Fantastic. pastry cream. Gosh, I'm almost tempted myself, but um, well, I have to be careful. <laughs> oh, I needed that, didn't I? He has to be. What do you think? I'll just kind of pull it right in there. Come and have brunch, Alan. You can have as many of these as you like. <laughs> well, Mr. Duffel has asked us to come and have brunch, and. So indeed, it would uh, be incumbent upon us not to be rude, and we are going to brunch, and we're going there now. Well, we're going to the brunch area. Now, what's this called? This is the lower courtyard. We do brunch every Sunday here, about uh, three to 400 covers every week. And um, it's a very reasonable price. It's $29.50 per person. Certainly is. Oh, look, Alan, can I introduce you to our chef? Certainly. This is Per Jakobsen, our uh, executive Sarah? chef. Hello. Nice to meet you. Let's um, come and have a look at this wonderful spread that you have over here. And perhaps right. you can give us a little background information about what we're going to see. Okay. The, uh, the brunch that we're serving here is a bit more every Sunday at 11 o'clock. We start off with our appetizer buffet and salad buffet, which has assorted field greens on it. It has a pasta salad with smoked meats in it. It has the uh, rice salad with uh, grilled salmon, uh, fresh asparagus with a Dijon vinaigrette dressing, uh, tomatoes uh, and fresh mozzarella with pesto sauce. This is really your anti -pasta. This is the anti is it, station. Is this your primary responsibility to make sure this happens like this? I make sure that everything happens, that everything gets coordinated and gets out here in time and that all the quality is there and all the products. And you have a number of other stations here yeah, I noticed as well. We're going to move on and see some of those. Station, uh, what we're cooking today is uh, penne pasta with the roasted uh, tomato sauce. I wish the folks could smell this. With, uh, it is absolutely pesto. wonderful. And cheese tortellini with a uh, gorgonzola uh, sauce. You know, I imagine as we look at this that not only does this food have to be pleasing to the palate, but the visual palate as well. 
You have to be an artist of, yes. of sorts. The displays has to be there so the computers come in and see. They, they really want to eat everything. This is our fresh fruit table with fresh berries, raspberries, blackberries, strawberries, blueberries. There is uh, star fruit and the different types of melons, uh, fresh plums, grapes. And here we have a little station that just has uh, low calorie stuff running for the people that are a little more conscious about what they eat. There is uh, rice and a stir fry and a few other things. Over here is our one of our top features, which is all the smoked fish, smoked Norwegian salmon, smoked trout, peppered mackerel. And next to it what we have um, uh, buckwheat blinis, that is for the uh, for the caviar. And we're featuring three types of caviar, ceruca, American sturgeon, and uh, salmon caviar, toasted bagels, cream cheese, fresh Florida stone crabs, and uh, jumbo shrimps, and clams. Tell me, how long does it take you to put this together? What time do you have to start? We start here at about 6.30 in the morning uh, to get everything ready. So we're looking and at about almost six hours to do this. That's, that's and it, you yes. are the overseer, the... I'm the, the executive chef for the hotel, yes. The supervisor of all of this area. That's correct, yeah. Well, let's move Over on. There's, on the there's much more down here. Yeah. Features all our breakfast items. We're preparing uh, omelets to the order, any kind of bacon that people would like. Plus, we have an ex Benedict with Canadian bacon. We have um, the cheese uh, blintzes with, uh, with blueberry sauce and fresh raspberries. Well, this is where we prepare the, uh, the eggs and fresh waffles uh, with, the, with the warm uh, maple syrup. And on the other side, we have our regular breakfast uh, items, the breakfast potatoes. Smoke sausage and uh, something bacon. for everyone. Where did you receive your training to do this? I'm from Denmark and I get trained in Denmark. I came over here about six years ago. Does this take a lot of work to learn this? And I guess this probably has to be a labor of love. It's, uh, you certainly have to enjoy it. You have to like coming in in the morning and, and start taking care of it and getting it all set up. Well, I can tell that home. you do. And our next order of business is getting to eating some of this ourselves. another episode of Snapshot. We thank you so much for joining us and we thank Mr. Michael Duffel here at the Biltmore Hotel in Carl Gables for taking us on this magnificent tour. Until next time, I'm your host, Alan Wolf. I hope you'll join us then. Cheers, Alan. Cheers.